on this episode of Postcards. The real equipment is made to take apart when you have a breakdown. So I make all of my stuff to make it look like it can be taken apart. Originally, I started doing all of this just to like process my own emotions and stuff and just, just because I enjoyed it. That still, to, to this day, is the biggest performance I've ever done. Even still looking back at that video, I just look at all those people and I'm like, wow, I can't believe I did that. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Juline on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram, online at 967cram.com. I was born after the Depression, shortly after. For toys, as a kid, you just didn't have any. I did have a cousin that, back I think in about 1929, his dad had bought him a cast iron trash machine. Along with that set came a tractor, a 1020 McCormick Deering. He played with it till it was well abused, I guess. Then it went on to another cousin of mine. He was done with it, and of course, then it was given to me. I was third in line. And then I played with it. Pretty happy to have it because we didn't have toys. There was no money to buy toys. My wife and I, we are retired farmers from north of Montevideo. We have been in town for 25 years. My dad passed away when he's in 1982. Coming back from Minneapolis, St. Louis Park, where he was at, I came by um, a small town and there was a guy that had a whole bunch of real tractors lined up that he had restored. And when I got about two miles down the road, I was thinking about these tractors. So I turned around and I went back and I looked and I kind of thought, you know, it would be fun to get into buying old tractors and restoring them. But then I was thinking also, what would be wrong and start collecting the toys instead of the real thing? But that kind of got old, just going out and buying it. So I decided, you know, we got to have the clutch pedal, the brake pedals, the shift levers, the throttle levers. So when I'd buy a new toy, I would customize it to get all of those little final finishing touches on them to make them look more realistic. I would look around, find old toys, and I started tearing them apart, restoring them, painting them up, it was fun. I had done that for quite some time, and neighbors and friends would bring toys over. Can you do this for me?
As time went on, Ertl Toy Company and uh, other companies started building what they called a precision toy. My hobby kind of became dormant, so to say, because you could go to town and buy it off the shelf and a precision toy were made beautifully. So then I took on another challenge, a challenge that I thought in my own mind was impossible, but it's worth a try. I started building my own toys, completely from scratch. I only build farm toys that Speccast, Ertl, and these companies have never made one of a kind. It's called a TLW. That tractor was never produced. The loader was too heavy and too hefty, too much power in the loader for the tractor. The tractor couldn't take it. They made three of them in a proto, but they were never marketed. But Denny and Patty Kirkspine, East of Montevideo, they owned one, but I built this one off of that. Just something I thought that was kind of fun. So that's why this one, and that's, you know, kind of a unique unit. I, I make everything out of sheet metal. I buy little bolts and nuts. They come out of Lebanon, New Jersey. When I order, I order a thousand at the time because the combine is maybe got from three to 400 bolts in it. You don't see all those bolt heads, but I like to have them bolted. I don't want it soldered or welded or glued because the real equipment is made to take apart when you have a breakdown. So I make all of my stuff to make it look like it can be taken apart. And nobody else really sees that, but I see it and I know it's supposed to be there. See, I can take this off. You see down there, it's the straw walkers and also your power steering hydraulic cylinders back there. And then in here, then you see my controls. I got all the controls and stuff are all in there. You don't want to drop them. It takes a lot of time. And when you're retired, time don't mean much. The more time you spend, the faster the day goes. I can come down here to my little toy shop and I can be working and my wife will give me a little holler and say, it's time to eat. You may be thinking it's 10 o'clock in the morning and here all of a sudden it's noon. And this is my dad. In 1939, he was picking corn, and he had what you call, a, it's a 1P international corn picker with the homemade wagon, homemade box, and an H farm all on it. And my mother took this picture of him back a few years ago. I found that picture. So I decided that it would be fun to have a replica of my dad picking corn. I bought the H farm all, that's company made, but then I built the corn picker, built the wagon and built the, the box for it. And of course it's got little ears of corn here. They're pretty small. I've always said as a joke thing that the reason the ears are small, they came out of South Dakota. Years ago, I was at a toy show in Alexandria, Minnesota, and they had a pedal tractor. And the guy wanted to sell it to me, which I had no interest in pedal tractors. This one here was beat. And I said, how much do you want for it? Well, it ended up, I walked out of there with it for $40, which was 
very reasonable, but at that time they weren't worth anymore. And I restored that. And all of a sudden I got interested in pedal tractors. So that's got to start to get carried away too. So now I got to go to what we call our storage room. And I do have some pedal tractors here. And uh, this is, everybody's gonna have a junk room and this is kind of our junk room. But I do have an assortment of pedal tractors in here. I look for the old ones. The old ones is history and I have quite a few now that I have restored of the old ones. In fact, I brought down the 60 John Deere yesterday, the large model, the 38 inch, and the 400 International. One was made in 1954 and one in 1955. I've been doing this now for, I think, 38 years. Time has gone fast. It's been great. And I guess one of the big things is, when I'm gone, I've told the kids and the grandkids, the great grandkids, you do whatever you want with the toys, but of all the handmade toys that I have built, I want them divided between the kids so everybody gets something to remember old grandpa by. I have an aunt who, well, she passed away now at the nursing home. She was interested in what I was doing. And I would bring her a picture of something that I had just made. And she looked at me one day and she said, Wes, you have a God-given talent. I never knew that. And I guess I didn't appreciate that our good Lord had given me something that I was able to do that I can be proud of and my family can be proud of. And not that I'm that important, I'm not that. Most people, I do feel, have a God-given talent, but they don't realize it's out there till they try and take, so to speak, the bull by the horns and see what you can do with that talent. Life can be a lonely thing if you wait for to go to bed or you wait to get up. You, I've always said you've got a reason to get up in the morning and I've been given a good reason. first started creating art it was around third grade. I did a lot of drawings and stuff of like TV shows that I liked. A lot of it was like kind of anime stuff and so I would always draw that in class and not be paying attention to what we're supposed to be doing. I grew up here in Granite Falls, Minnesota. I was originally born in Key West, Florida. Spent most of my teenage years uh, here, and then after high school, I joined the Air Force. And then after the Air Force, came back to Granite. And then from Granite, moved to St. Cloud. And then after St. Cloud, back to California, or out to California for a little while, and then back to Granite. So kind of hopped all over the place, but I really enjoy being in Granite. It's my hometown, and feels like home. So that's kind of why I'm still here. So I first started doing this style of painting just because I felt like it was kind of the, I don't know, quickest way to create some kind of art without having to put too much planning into it. I 
I wanted to start creating more art that was more inspired by like emotions and stuff versus just kind of planning something out in my head. So that's what a lot of my abstract art kind of tends to be is something that's like fueled by emotions and just kind of, you know, just like the vibes that I'm going through with at the moment. And then I just kind of transform that into a piece of art. My page is called Tie the Octopus Art. I have this fascination with octopus and uh, I think they're really cool. So I don't know, I just figured I just need some kind of brand name. So that's, that's just what I came up with. Typically what I'll do is kind of start layering out some paints, the ones I'm gonna work with. This one I think I'm gonna try and go with like, I don't know, some more brighter colors. So this is how you <laughs> this is how you get all of that. And I try to spread it out a little bit. Usually I do this a lot when either the paint globs up too much. Yeah, ultimately in the end, I try to get almost everything to somewhat bleed together. But like this one, that's it, man. I resonate with this. I like the way it looks. I like the way it came out. And then, that's pretty much it. Originally I started doing all of this just to like process my own emotions and stuff and just, just because I enjoyed it. Seeing all the people that admire it, it's kind of developed its own small community around it and I think that's been really enjoyable. Every time that I post a piece online, I have all, a lot of the same people kind of commenting, letting me know what they can uh, see in the paintings and I always find that a little bit fun to do. I ask people like what they see in the paintings because most of the time I'm not really trying to create anything too specific um, or I may create something specific in my head but being that it's abstract people can develop their own impressions on it and so I really enjoy hearing what people have to say about that and I guess that's a part that I've kind of enjoyed along this journey is hearing everyone else's different interpretations of it. I got started in music when I was in kindergarten. My mom signed me up for piano lessons and I took piano lessons my whole life. I'm still taking them today. I started guitar lessons when I was nine years old when my guitar teacher forced me to sing a song and I did not want to. I wouldn't even sing in front of my parents. She finally convinced me and I sang my first song called Mean by Taylor Swift. 
I went to two of her concerts before I took guitar lessons and just seeing her up on that stage, it was just so cool to me. So my first ever performance was at uh, the middle school talent show in front of 500 of my peers. That performance really opened up to all the other opportunities that I could do with performances. You can bow me down and Eventually, I started to sing at restaurants and bars and wineries. So I kind of went from preparing like one or two really good songs to two hours of songs. You broke my heart, oh girl, for goodness sake. You think I'm crying, don't I? Well, I ain't. But you're always gonna fly away. Just because you know. The first song I ever wrote was Summer in Minnesota, and that's one that my guitar teacher told me to write. After I started singing, she said, well, you should write a song, and I thought it was crazy, but I tried, and then sure enough, I, I wrote Summer in Minnesota. When I was 12 years old, I tried out for the Candy High County Talent Contest, and I got first place there, so I got to move on to two extra rounds at uh, the State Fair, just on smaller stages, and those weren't huge performances, but then I eventually qualified for the grandstand, and that's where I sang in front of 8,000 people. In Minnesota, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ava Hansen! That was still, to, to this day, is the biggest performance I've ever done. Even still looking back at that video, I just look at all those people and I'm like, wow, I can't believe I did that. It's like the gardening in the grass is green, 80 degrees and swaying trees, fishing in the lake with the nice cool breeze. Everything that you can dream of is summer. Oh, this was our Christmas card one year. And my mom had me draw the back of it to commemorate my state fair experience. So it's not just music that I enjoy, it's also uh, doing art. We have a long history of artists in the family. I like to paint, I like to draw, mixed media projects, pretty much anything that I can do that's like painting natural landscapes. I love anything in the outdoors, so that's mainly what I try to incorporate art with. I'm a senior at New London Spicer High School, and I really enjoy doing anything that I can outdoors, like horseback riding, water skiing, water sports. I grew up on the lake, so that's a big part of my life. Two sports I'm in are tennis and golf. I actually don't know where I want to go with music, but I still have a lot to figure out about college, and wherever life takes me, I will always carry music with me, no matter what. I just don't know what it will look like yet. I like to write my songs about pretty much anything. Sometimes they're experiences that I've gone through, sometimes they're, it's the complete opposite where I have not gone through an experience, but it just kinda, the lyrics just kinda come to me and I put it on the paper and it just makes sense. So I pretty much write about whatever I'm feeling like that day. <laughs> I 
took my time and I picked my line so carefully, oh so carefully. But did I think too much? Did I let myself get in the way of what Growing up, I was always really shy and afraid to put myself out there. But music has really, really helped me grow in just being able to put myself out there and not caring what everyone thinks of me all the time because when you're on stage so much like I am, it's easy to only think about what others are thinking of you, but performing so much has really made me realize that it's okay to put yourself out there and I am a different person than I was when I started guitar lessons when I was nine. I've really evolved in a way that has helped me get through high school and all my performances. So I think music has really, really helped me grow in a good way. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram. Online at 96.7cram.com. <laughs>